Welcome to the season premiere of High School Quiz Show Maine. We have 16 schools from across the state competing to be this year's champion and take home that $1,000 prize for their school's project graduation. In our first qualifying match, it's the Huskies of Gould Academy. Taking on the Witches of Brewer High School. That's next on the season premiere of High School Quiz Show Maine. Production support for High School Quiz Show Maine is provided by Energy is about more than just keeping the lights on. It's about living life as parents, friends, and teammates. Unitil is proud to support High School Quiz Show Maine. Unitil, more than a utility, part of your community. People who can work from home seem to love it. Who else loves it? Cyber criminals. Cyber coverage from Safety Insurance covers data and system restoration, data recreation, and more. You can ask an independent agent about safety insurance. We'll help you manage life's storms and by viewers like you. Thank you. Welcome to season seven of High School Quiz Show Maine. I'm Todd Gutner. Last fall, schools from across the state took the qualifying test to be part of this season. The top 16 scoring schools have made it onto the show and each one is hoping to become our newest champion and take home the thousand dollar grand prize for their school's project graduation. In our first game for season seven, we have a rematch of two teams who met in season six the Gould Academy Huskies from Bethel are hoping to repeat their win over the Brewer Witches, who are hoping to rack up a second Quiz Show Championship. Now, let's go on to meet the players for our kickoff match. For Gould, we have Mary, David, Polly, and Will, with Amelia and Emmett and Marco as alternates, and they're coached by Adam Leff. And for Brewer, we have Zach, Lily, Stella, and Annette, with alternate Ren, and coached by Sue Ann Gaines. The competition, of course, has three rounds. The toss-up round, the category round, and the lightning round. We'll start with the toss-up round. All answers are worth 10 points, and this is the only round with no point deductions for wrong answers. Players must wait for me to complete the question, and if one team answers incorrectly, the other team will be given a chance to answer. Okay, Gould, okay, Brewer, are you guys ready to kick off this season? Yeah. yeah. All right, that sounds pretty good. Here comes the first question of season seven. The official languages of Canada are English and which other language? Zach Brewer. French. French is right. And we're off. Uh, famous for his worst intros series and for posting a video of himself counting to 100,000, Jimmy Donaldson is a YouTuber and philanthropist, mainly known by what online alias? Uh, Will Gould. Mr. Beast. Mr. Beast is right. On TV, Millie Bobby Brown plays what teenage detective character who has older brothers named Sherlock and Mycroft? Uh, that'd be Stella Brewer. Enola Holmes. Enola Holmes, correct again. The area known as Research Triangle Park is located in the region between Raleigh, Durham, and Chapel Hill in which U.S. state? Polly Gould. North Carolina. That's correct, North Carolina. All right, we have a picture question, and that's next, so please look over here at the monitor. Here is the question. This ancient Egyptian artifact featuring a decree inscribed in three scripts was instrumental in deciphering hier hieroglyphics. Uh, what is its common known name? <coughs> Lily Brewer. The Rosetta Stone. That is right. As, it na as its name indicates, hydroponics is a method of growing plants by replacing soil with what liquid? Go ahead, Mary. Water. Water is right. Portugal shares a land border with just one other country. Which country is it? Uh, David Gould. Spain. Spain is the right answer. We move on to Trinity, which sold at auction for $6.1 million in 2023 is a composite skeleton of what kind of dinosaur made up of bones from three different sites? The answer is T-Rex is the dinosaur. 
Next question. Bowler, trilby, and fedora are types of what article of clothing? Stella Brewer. Hat. Hat is right. Up next, we have a video question. So once again, look at that monitor. Hello. My name is Joshua Chard, and I am the 2024 Maine Teacher of the Year. And today's video question category is science. What is the name of the process by which a cell engulfs a solid particle, bringing it into the cell? Zach Brewer. Endocytosis. That's incorrect. Gould, do you want to take a shot at that? Mitosis. Uh, good guess. Uh, the answer is phagocytosis. Got that? All right, we'll move on now. We'll move on. The outermost layer of the sun's atmosphere is known by what name that comes from a Latin word meaning crown? David Gould. Corona. Corona, yes. What civil rights leader delivered his I've been to the mountaintop speech in Memphis on April 3rd, 1968, the day before he was assassinated? Mary Gould. Martin Luther King. That, that's correct. Uh, in which winter sport do players slide rocks into the house, hoping to get them close to the button? Zach Brewer. Curling. Yeah, good one. Uh, the equator passes through which of these countries, Australia, Brazil, or India? Go ahead, Mary. Brazil. Brazil is correct. We have a math question now. There should be a pencil and paper right in front of you. When 3x plus 2x equals 35, what is the value of x? David Gould. Seven. One more time. Seven. That's quick math, and you got it right. Here at Horace Green and You're in the Band are songs from what Broadway musical that's based on a 2003 movie? Legally Blonde? That's incorrect. You want to go for it, Brewer? Want to ring in with a guess? No? Okay. It's School of Rock. School of Rock. After a windstorm took down more than 400 trees at the Bruce Moore Historic Site in Cedar Rapids, Iowa, landscapers brought in a herd of what farm animals to eat the invasive plants and clear the area for new trees to be planted? Mary again. Goats. Goats is again, correct. Lithium ion technology is widely used to make a rechargeable type of what power source? Lily Brewer. Cell phone. Uh, incorrect. Gould? Battery. Battery is again correct. We'll move on. In The Great Gatsby, what woman is Nick's cousin, Tom's wife, and Gatsby's long lost love? Mary Gould. Daisy. Daisy. Daisy Buchanan. That is correct. Next question. Named for a member of the French National Assembly, what device with a very sharp blade was used to execute people during the French Revolution? Will Gould. Um, oh, I can't remember the name. That's Never mind. okay. It's okay. Uh, Brewer, you have a shot now. Go ahead, Stella. Guillotine? Guillotine, that's it. That was on the tip of your tongue, wasn't yeah, it, Will? Yeah, it was. Yeah. <laughs> it was, it was. All right. Uh, the Hertzsprung-Russell diagram is used for classifying which of these things? Chromosomes, stars, or trees? Uh, Lily Brewer. Chromosomes. That's incorrect. Gould, go ahead, Mary. Stars. Yes, you got it. Stars is it. All right, in Greek mythology, instead of hair, Medusa and her Gorgon sisters have what creatures growing from their heads? Uh, Will, Gould? Snakes. Snakes is right, yep. Which metallic element is the most abundant metal in Earth's crust? Go ahead, Stella. Iron. Uh, incorrect. Gould, do you want to take a shot? Go ahead, Polly. Aluminum. You nailed it. Was that, wait, was that a complete guess? Yes. You go. <laughs> wow. There's so many medals out there, too. All right, next question. Which two colors are the only colors on the national flags of Japan, Poland, and Turkey? <laughs> Lily, your turn. White and red. You nailed that. Math question again. Pencils, papers, here we go. A recipe calls for 32 ounces of juice to make one quart of punch. Using this recipe, how many ounces of juice will you need to make a gallon of punch? Uh, David Gould. 128. 128, yes, good job. A river, a bay, and a strait in northeastern North America were named for what 17th century explorer who was commander of a ship called the Half Moon? Uh, Lily Brewer. 
Magellan. Uh, that's incorrect. Go ahead, Gould. Uh, Polly. I'll say Marco Polo. Uh, also incorrect. Hudson. Hudson is the answer. Henry Hudson. Even though the actors change from movie to movie, the main antagonists in the Scream horror film franchise are known by what name that relates to the spooky mask they wear? Will Gould. Ghostface. Ghostface, yes. Uh, what writing system that was used by the Sumerians around 3200 BCE has a name that comes from the Latin word for wedge-shaped? Stella? Cuneiform? Yeah, you nailed that. Good job. All right, what invisible line of demarcation is located at approximately 66 degrees, 30 minutes north latitude? Mary. Longitude? Uh, incorrect. Brewer? Tropic of Cancer? Um, Arctic Circle. Arctic Circle is the right answer here. We go to the next one. A poem by William Blake refers to what animal burning bright in the forests of the night? Lily Brewer. Tiger. Tiger is it. What metal alloy that consists mainly of tin with small amounts of copper and antimony was commonly used to make household items such as plates and cups in colonial America? Annette on the end. Lead. Uh, lead is incorrect. Gould? I'll say aluminum again. You're going to go with aluminum again? It was a good guess. You seem to be the guess around the team, Polly. Incorrect. Pewter. Pewter. All right, that's the end of first round. We have a score of Gould 160 and Brewer 90. It's a great start to season seven. We will meet the teams when we get back. Production support for High School Quiz Show Maine is provided by... Hey, how are you doing today? The Maine Education Association does a fantastic job of giving us a voice. So what do you think? Good manners. To help teachers and students realize that people support them every day. The MEA helps me be better at my job. And by viewers like you. Thank you. Welcome back. Before we head to the category round, we like to pause and get to know our players with a slightly silly question, which is this right here. You get to design your dream theme park. What would it be called and what would be in it? We'll start over here with Mary. Um, I think my favorite theme park already exists, which is Dollywood, because it's Dolly Parton, and can you get any better than that? You, you pretty much can't. You can't. It's and, her. and she's like timeless too. She isn't is. She? Yeah, she's Forever amazing. Ever and ever. Well, probably. <laughs> she's gone on the golden record. Yeah. Um, David, your turn. For me, it would have to be like a huge water park on a tropical island. Okay. Probably called like Aqua Palace or something like that. <laughs> Aqua Palace? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds pretty cool. You're into water parks, clearly. Yeah. <laughs> What's your favorite water park that you've been to? Oh, uh, there's this one in Germany, and it's like a huge dome. Oh, cool. And they have. Yeah, I think Is that's. Is it triple one? Yeah, I think yeah. that's it. Yeah. What, whatever you guys just said. <laughs> <laughs> Polly. I think mine's gonna um, just complete all my childhood dreams. It's gonna be some mix of Jurassic Park and uh -huh. a Dinosaur Train. <laughs> uh, I remember Dinosaur Train. Make it with dragons instead of dinosaurs. Oh, you're and a bigger like... dragon fan now, huh? Now, yes, actually. Puberty hit and dinosaurs <laughs> became dragons. It's funny what happens when that hits, isn't it? Um, Will, <laughs> go ahead. Why do you finish up your teams? Um, so I'm thinking a uh, ski resort, but it has a huh. roller coaster instead of a chairlift to huh. get you to the top. That, you know, why hasn't someone already done that? Yeah, and um, I'm gonna trademark that idea by calling it Will Land. Will Land, I like the idea of it. What's your favorite mountain to ski at, by the way? I'm gonna go, have to go with my home mountain, Sunday River. That's a good choice, that's a good choice, coming from Gould <laughs> Academy. Uh, we'll go over to Brewer, go ahead, Zach. Um, I've always loved red pandas, um, so I think my amusement park would have a lot of red pandas. Um, huh. I was thinking of like a red panda palace, like red a roller coaster palace. around it. Yeah. It's got a good little uh, ring to the name too. It's catchy. Yeah, I think so. All right, Zach, thank you. Uh, Lily, your turn. Um, I'd have to go with Lily Land. <laughs> and I'd have... How'd you come up with that name? <laughs> it was really hard. I had to like dig deep into yeah. the crevices of my brain. So what does Lily Land exist of? Um, like people from my life. I'd have like a violet coaster in there. 
Uh, that's Stella's sister. Oh, okay. I was so, about to ask you. Yeah, so it would be like different rides, like themed around my friends. Would that be a scary ride or like a fun ride or a... I think it'd be a scary ride. Oh, really? Stella's sister's that scary, huh? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Stella's nodding yes, by the way. Uh, Stella, your turn. You can get more, you can zing your sister more if you want. No, I, I feel bad. Um, <laughs> I really already like Six Flags, yeah. so I'm going to call mine Seven Flags. And <laughs> it's just going to be a better version of Six Flags with better rides. Makes sense. Makes a lot of sense. Thanks, Stella. Uh, Annette? Uh, I think mine would just be called Funlandia, you know? Yeah. Nice, keep it simple. You know, it would have roller coasters, that boat that goes back and forth. Oh, uh, that that so that's fun. freaks me out, especially when you you know, you know get to the top top there. It's so I, much fun. Uh, for you, much. maybe. For you. <laughs> By the way, I would make up my own uh, uh, dream theme park, and it would be called Meowie World, and it would be consisting of all cats and only cats. And at the entrance to this theme park, would be my cat, giant, giant sculpture of uh, Ares, giant monument of Ares. And I've thoroughly just embarrassed my twin 14-year-olds, and I hope they talk to me again later on tonight. We'll see. Anyway, the category round is next, but let's see how well you do with our viewer question of the week. Hi, I'm Alec O'Mara from Unitil, and this is your viewer question of the week. The main Friendship House is a museum dedicated to the 1866 journey of a group of Christian Mainers who sailed overseas from Jonesport to establish a church and a new colony. In which country will you find this museum? Is it Israel, Norway, Scotland, or Morocco? We'll reveal the answer later in the show. Next up, we have the category round with the following choices. Our house, V is for vocabulary. Life by the lake, four plus four. It's a colorful place and how sweet. Each team will alternate control of two categories. Questions have increasing point values. With each question, they can choose to either answer and either gain or lose points. They can skip it and neither gain nor lose points. Or, once per category, they can toss it to the other team and force them to answer the question. Players will have five seconds to confer with each other and decide what to do. Our trailing team right now is Brewer, so you guys have your first choice of the board. What category are we going to? Uh, v is for vocabulary. V is for, for vocab. These are... All, all answers will be words that start with the letter V, okay? Here's the first question for 10 points. What V word that can be a synonym for inoculation has a root that comes from the Latin word for cow? Lily, what do you want to do? Uh, skip. You want to skip. The answer is vaccination. Vaccination. V is for vocabulary for 15. From Latin words that mean goodbye and speaking, what V word refers to the student at the top of a class who delivers the farewell speech at a graduation? Valedictorian. That's correct. Uh, v is for vocab for 20. In 1944, a man named Donald Watson coined what V word to describe a person who does not eat meat, eggs, or dairy products? Vegan. Vegan is also right. V is for vocabulary, 25. From the Italian for little worms, what is the name for long, stringy pasta that is skinnier than spaghetti? What would you like to do there, Lily? You can, uh, we're going to skip. You want to skip that one as well. So it's vermicelli, vermicelli. V is for vocab, last question in the category. What common name for a female fox comes from the Old English word for fox? Uh, we're gonna toss. You wanna toss that? I will read it again to you guys at Gould, you'll have to answer. Uh, what common name for a female fox comes from the Old English word for fox? Vixen. Vixen, you nailed it. That was pretty easy. All right, so that's the end of the first category. We go over to Gould now. What will be your choice, Mary? Uh, can we do It's a Colorful Place? You can. It's a Colorful Place. These are questions about places with colors in their names. Colors in their names. 
Here's the first question. The largest island in the world that is not a continent is which island in the North Atlantic? Greenland. Greenland. Yes, that's right. It's a colorful place for 15. The Mahusik Range in western Maine is an extension of what of which mountains that cover about 25% of New Hampshire? White Mountains. White Mountains. The White Mountains, also right. It's a colorful place, 20. The geyser known as Old Faithful is a popular spot in which U.S. National Park? Yellowstone. Yellowstone is also right. It's a colorful place for 25. Egypt, Saudi Arabia, and Yemen are three of the seven countries with ports on which sea in the Middle East? Red Sea. Red Sea, you guys are flying through this category. Here's the last one, see if you sweep it. It's a colorful place for 30. The small county located between Los Angeles and San Diego has what colorful name that refers to its local agriculture? Orange County. You did sweep it, nice job. All right, we're heading back to Brewer. You guys have a chance here. Let's go with your second category. Uh, we'll go with how sweet. How sweet, these are questions about desserts. Okay, here's the first question. The town of Dover Foxcroft hosts an annual festival in honor of what soft, cream-filled chocolate treat that is the official state treat of Maine? Whoopie pie. <laughs> you better have gotten that one right. <laughs> Here's the second one for how sweet. It's said that Queen Elizabeth I of England has what kind of sweet and spicy cookies baked in the shape of her friends, making houses from this kind of cookie became popular in Germany after the Brothers Grimm published the tale of Hansel and Gretel. Gingerbread. Gingerbread, also right. How sweet for 20. The pearls at the bottom of a cup of bubble tea are what starch that comes from cassava root and can also be the basis for a thick, sweet pudding. Tapioca. Tapioca, nice job. How sweet for 25. Marzipan is traditionally made from what kind of nuts that are finely ground and mixed with sugar and honey? Almond. Almond, also right. And the last one, maybe you guys could sweep the category. Which Italian dessert made with ladyfingers, mascarpone cheese, espresso, marsala wine, and cocoa powder has a name that loosely translates as pick-me-up? Tiramisu. You did it. You swept it. Nice job, Brewer. And we go back to Gould for your second category. We are on a roll right now. Can we do four plus four? Four plus four. Yes, we can. All answers consist of two four-letter words or names like King Kong or True Blue. Here's the first question for 10. Keanu Reeves plays what title character with two four-letter names in a series of neo-noir action films whose fourth installment was released in 2023? John Wick. Yes, John Wick. Four plus four, 15. A film franchise of buddy movies uh, starring Jackie Chan and Chris Tucker takes its name from what two-word phrase that refers to the time of day when road traffic is heavy because people are traveling to and from work? Rush hour. <laughs> Rush hour, yeah. Four plus four for 20. Which very short, flat track in the Mario Kart video game series may have a staff ghost that rides a goo-goo go buggy or a mushmallow? Uh, I don't play video games. I'm going to say Coconut Mall. <laughs> It, the answer is Baby Park. Sorry about that. Sorry about that, Gould. We'll go on, though. Four plus four for 25. In her first hit single from 2007, Sarah Bareilles sings, I'm not going to write you a what, because you asked for it. Love song? Love song is right, yes. Four plus four for 30, the last one. Named for his light-colored plumage and his gender, what red-tailed hawk lived in and around New York City's Central Park from the 1990s until his death in 2023. Toss. You want to toss this one over to Brewer? I will read it again to you guys. Named for his light-colored plumage and his gender, what red-tailed hawk lived in and around New York City's Central Park from the 1990s until his death in 2023? <laughs> what do you think, Lily? Pink boy. I mean, not a bad guess. It was pale male. You weren't far off. <laughs> well, that's going to end our category round. We have a score right now of Gould at 320. Brewer is at 195. But everything can change in the lightning round. So sit tight. We'll be right back. How did you do with the question of the week? It was... 
The main Friendship House is a museum dedicated to the 1866 journey of a group of Christian Mainers who sailed overseas from Jonesport to establish a church and a new colony. In which country will you find this museum? Is it Israel, Norway, Scotland, or Morocco? The answer is Israel. The museum is in the city of Jaffa, a house brought over from Jonesport with the pilgrims on the ship Nellie Chapin. Okay, here it is. We're heading into the final 90 seconds of gameplay. It's the lightning round. Players, you do not have to wait for me to finish the question. You can buzz in at any time, but do not answer them until I call your name. You get 20 points for each correct answer. Incorrect answers will also cost you 20 points, and the other team does not get a chance to answer the question. So our clock is set. Good luck to both of you. Here we go in the lightning round. Which American writer created Tom Sawyer and Huckleberry Finn? Lily Brewer. Mark Twain. Yes. What is the molecular formula for water? Will Gould. H2O. Yup. In the Northern Hemisphere, winter solstice happens around the 21st of what month? Go ahead, Stella. December. Yes. How many feet does a tetrapod have? Zach. Four. Four is right. NASA's Johnson Space Center is in which Texas city? Go ahead, Mary. Houston. Houston, yeah. Cobalt is a shade of what color? Annette Brewer. Blue. Blue, yes. In the Star Wars films, what's the name of Han Solo's Wookiee co-pilot? Go ahead, Zach. Chewbacca. Yep. Basmati and Arborio are... Uh, David Gould. Rice. Rice, yes. Helsinki is the capital of which... Go again, David. Finland. Finland again, right. One billion is written as a one followed by... Nine. Oh, sorry. Will. Nine. Uh, you got it right. <laughs> The Interpretation of Dreams is a work by which Austrian site? Uh, Polly. Sigmund Freud. Yes. The name of which zodiac sign is Latin for twins? Stella Brewer. Pisces. Incorrect. Right? It's, uh, no, no, it's Gemini. The sheriff of what English city is the antagonist in the classic tales of Robin Hood? Uh, Annette. Nottingham. Nottingham, yeah. And that's the end of our lightning round and the final score in our winning team, Gould, with 440 points. They'll be moving on to the quarterfinals in a few weeks. Our runner-up this evening, Brewer, with 295 points. Thanks so much, so much for playing. Congratulations to both teams. Be sure to tune in next time as Deering takes on North Yarmouth Academy. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time on High School Quiz Show Maine. Production support for High School Quiz Show Maine is provided by Energy is about more than just keeping the lights on. It's about living life as parents, friends, and teammates. Unitil is proud to support High School Quiz Show Maine. Unitil, more than a utility, part of your community. Home renovations can increase the value of your home. Safety Insurance offers a variety of home insurance products to cover your home's increased value. You can ask an independent agent about Safety Insurance. Safety Insurance will help you manage life's storms. And by viewers like you. Thank you. Sunshine.